Hey YouTube, welcome back. Um, reminder, if you want a lesson, check the link in the description. Let's talk about the Thayer problem. And of course, we're starting by looking at this rotor valve, which is not a Thayer. Kind of confusing. This is not a Thayer, but Thayers are rotors. So let's talk about this real quick. You can see on this side we have the um, spindle. There we go. It's the kind of the thing that goes all the way through. Um, this is the stop arm end, obviously. Here's the stop arm. Um, here's the bearing on this side. Bearing meaning what is actually touching metal to metal on a rotor valve. You can see this particular rotor valve has some play. Uh, maybe it's hard to see. It does have a little play in this direction. It has maybe... Uh, no, it doesn't really have any this way. So it has play, meaning it moves when it shouldn't, um, kind of in this plane, I guess. There we go. But it doesn't have any this way. So that's actually pretty easily fixed. You swedge this bearing, meaning you kind of crush this bearing to make it a little bit smaller so that this fits properly again. So here we have the back with the backing plate. Obviously, this back plate comes off. Um, and we have the other bearing, which is right here with the back side of the spindle. And you can see it moving, and uh, we're not going to see any play on this side, I think. Probably not. Um, anyway, this is another thing you can swedge or make a little bit smaller so that the valve fits better and seals better. The valve primarily seals through these bearings, but also touches the inside of the casing just a little bit. And that's how the valve seals and plays well. Cool, so enough rotors. Well... Not enough rotors, but enough normal conventional rotors. Let's talk about the Thayer problem. So here we have a Thayer slash axial flow valve. You notice that the valve moves in the same axis that the air does. So instead of it moving around this axis, it moves in this axis, the same one as the air. <laughs> axial flow. On this end, you'll see a bearing and spindle. The valve moves and does not really have any play in any direction, which is good. We want that out of there. And on the other side, we have, huh, just a, just a cone. How's this going to work? Well, you'll notice that taking this valve apart is going to be a little more involved than taking a rotor apart. With a rotor, basically, we take the stop arm off, take the valve cap off, and you're golden. You get to just knock the valve out. The instrument doesn't have to come apart. But on this, you'll notice this is the lock ring, a little bit different than the valve cap. And then the rest of the valve is going to go... Where exactly? We actually have to take the whole gosh thing, gosh thing, gosh darn thing apart to get this valve apart. Maybe that's the first part of the Thayer problem. Ta-da! Here we go. We have a Thayer that is in pieces. So we have our casing right here, which obviously is a cone shape on the inside as well as the outside. We have a, our rotor, which is only half of a rotor on this version of the uh, um, aluminum OE Thayer. This is an original OE Thayer valve and it's anodized aluminum so it doesn't uh, rot. And then we have the back plate, which is actually pretty similar to a conventional rotor, kind of, <laughs> in a couple ways. And you'll notice how the air moves. Air goes in this hole, you can see air goes straight in here, which is a lot of where the plane characteristics come from. And then if we have it oriented like this, it goes through the straight neck pipe, goes out the bell. And then if you turn the valve, you depress it, the air is now going through the F attachment, and then goes through this, and will return through that hole through the straight neck pipe. So obviously very free flowing and no big restrictions on the air, maybe except for the smaller bends. Now let's talk about bearings and surfaces. So on the end here, we have our spindle, which has a little bearing, cool, just pop all the way out. And we have our back plate. And obviously the valve is touching a lot of this back plate. Look how much of this is actually touching all the time. So all of this has to stay clean and smooth. And all of that has to stay clean and smooth or else these things are not gonna have a good time as well, of course, as the spindle itself. And then for our other bearing, What's this? It's literally just the end of a cone. And you can see there's a little raised portion um, that's a little bit lighter. That's the actual bearing on the other end of a Thayer. And we'll look inside the cone here as well. You can see where it touches. 
So even without like mechanical knowledge or knowledge of physics or anything, you can tell that one, having just a big old surface area, not always great for action. Two, having surface areas that are not um, flat are also not great. These That means when this is a cone, right? That this and that have to match up exactly perfectly in order for them to work and most importantly for them to seal and play well. You might not know this, but rotors, conventional rotors, this is all I can show you because it's on the ground, um, are not perfectly cylindrical. There's actually like little like tapers and stuff in there so things don't just not move. But this is much more complicated, of course, than any conventional rotor. And getting this angle to perfectly match the angle of your casing and then getting all of these measurements to line up perfectly as well is really difficult. And therein lies the Thayer problem. When Thayer's wear, and there's a lot of stuff to wear, right? There's the, the cone on the rotor, which can wear and usually does. There's the surface on the inside of the casing, it's right about here, that can also wear. Um, the back plate can wear and wear unevenly so it's not flat anymore. And of course, the spindle bearing here can wear as well. And it's not like any of this is new, the same thing happens in rotors and it does all the time, but some of you may have noticed the problem um, that lies within these surfaces wearing. When this stuff wears, instead of just being on the ends of the, the valve and you just swedge the bearings and you're like, all right, cool, now it, it seals again. Um, or maybe you just put in a new valve core that's not worn down, great. On something like this, these surfaces are so tight and they have to match up so well that once this stuff starts to wear down, instead of the valve sealing against everything, can I match this up looking through my phone? There we go. Instead of everything matching up, since things have worn down this way, now the valve, ugh, there we go, can move in this way. It'll have end play as it's called. This is why if you're gonna buy a Thayer instrument, maybe you haven't played it, maybe it's got old um, OE Thayers, it's from a Bach or it's an old Edwards or something, Always check, grab the uh, stop arm, which I've taken off. Looks like this, of course, and it'll have linkage on it. Grab the stop arm and feel for end play or the movement this direction. Usually there's not a lot of movement in this plane. So like trying to turn it in a circle without turning it. Nope, don't really have a lot of that. But if there's end play in this direction, that means the valve has probably worn here and here and will no longer seal. It will not play well no matter what you do oil-wise. Now, can this be fixed on certain um, axial flow and thayer valves? Yes, there are tools out there and techs out there that have those tools that can cut down the inside of the casing here to make it smooth again and make it perfect. They can work on this cone, make everything the right angle, and then of course, um, this actually has this step built in on the end of this casing that you can wear down. You can literally get sandpaper, the perfect grit, all this kind of stuff, and you can cut down the casing to make it a little bit smaller since you took material out of this and maybe this to make everything fit flush again and make the valve work. It's a lot of work and usually it's not really worth it. Also, you may have noticed that if you do that, if you make all of this stuff a little bit smaller and you move it over, you know, seven, eight thousandths of an inch this way, whatever it is, it's probably more than that actually, then these things no longer match up. Everything just moved that way. Not just the, not just the valve, but this whole thing just moved that way that same distance. On my bass drum on, I got really lucky because there's two valves, right? There's one here and then there's a little connector and then there's another one on the back. And that slack be can be taken up by the connector instead of nothing be able to move. But on a tenor valve like this, if you do the, all the work, and there's not many people that can do this, but if you do all the work, and get everything to seal well and the action's good again, then these things are no longer going to line up. And if you tighten everything down, nothing's going to move anymore because it's all under a bunch of stress trying to pull in different directions. So that's the Thayer problem. Um, I think they're great valves. This one is not a great valve. It actually has really good action. It's kind of weird. It's in really good shape. There's not a lot of wear here, not a lot of wear here. And when it's put together, there's no end play. 
just doesn't play super well, so I'm going to have it worked on. Um, but if I wanted to have it worked on seriously, have it cut out, um, lap down the casing, all that kind of stuff, I'd be out of luck. He'd have to like move all of these just a little bit, just a little bit, and then the tuning slide receiver doesn't match up with this, and like all this stuff has to change. So if I do keep this, I'll probably end up changing the valve out, or I'll just sell it as is, because honestly, it does play pretty well. But that about wraps it up. Basically, the the moral of the story is be very careful with Thayer instruments that you're buying used, especially sight unseen, because a lot of them have not been taken care of properly, meaning oiled, taken apart, and cleaned, and they will have this kind of crazy wear with lots of end play. So check for that end play. If there's not a lot of end play, they might be in good shape and you're good to go. Otherwise, I'd probably stay away because they're going to play really leaky and they're just not going to be fun. That's all I got. I'll see you guys next time.